Hi everybody, this is Hashtag Just Josh here for another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. This time we're looking at Unearth and Unearth Expansion, The Lost Tribe. Uh, for the game, the story behind it is that you are a group of delvers and you are digging for the ancient civilizations that have been lost by you know, time and these forests and these deserts, all kinds of different locations by your ancestors and trying to bring them to new glory, trying to bring them out into the surface again. So this is a combination tableau management, dice placement, and set building all seamlessly rolled into one game. This plays a little under an hour, give or take, uh, with the game. And actually what normally would be two to four with the base game, the expansion adds a solo mode and adds a fifth player element that not only gives you another player, but adds new cards for your ruins, adds new cards for uh, the reaction cards, adds new locations to go find, all kinds of stuff. Okay, let's take a look at the setup for Unearth. You have your runes that come across here, the five of them. You have your number on the bottom tells you how many stones show up on that rune. You have your stones themselves. You have the capture value that is needed to add up for your delvers, the little die here, that then you need it to capture that card. You have your wonders, either unique ones that need a, a particular hexagonal set to then capture, or you have your lesser and greater wonders. You have your player reminder cards. Those are always really, really useful, especially somebody like me who's constantly playing new games and you can't remember every rule for every game. This is really helpful. You have your Delvos, like I said, themselves. They're set up in three different types. You have a D6, sorry, the three D6s, one D4 and one D8, each of your colors. And then you have your Delver cards too. They essentially are like little mini ability cards that are one off. Besides that, in the expansion, you now have some added end game content for like, the last cards that are pulled, some different options. You have new unique wonders, which adds more mechanics to the actual uh, the building phase, essentially. You have a single player board that now you can play on your own against the darkness, and you have your darkness die, darkness scenario, and darkness cards. And you have your new runes when you're playing a bigger game because you have not only four, two to four, but now five players. Not only that, but you add new stones. You have your warp stone that can switch two locations for stones when you're building your tableau. You have a wild card that um, can be any color, but minus points at the end game, or a blank anything stone. So it has all kinds of new mechanics as you're building the tableau. Not only that, but when you're getting your delver cards, now you have reaction cards, which lets you play outside of your turn, depending on what's rolled by your opponents. Okay, so how does the game play? Every turn, you're gonna be able to choose one of your little delvers, one of your die, you're going to designate which rune you're going to try and excavate. You roll that die, place that die on there, and if you have one, two, or three, you get a stone. If you have more than three, could be maybe four, could be six, depending on the die you're rolling, then you don't get a stone, but you get a much higher claim on that location. Whoever has the highest number on each rune, when it gets uh, excavated, when it hits finally up to that you know, number, either 11, 17, 13, what have you, that person gets that location. Why do you want that location? Well, not only are you building a tableau with the stones and trying to capture your different wonders, you're also trying to build sets. Because depending on the ruins that you're collecting, you get different points for how many you get of each set, or if you get a collection of unique cards to build a set. So it's got a lot of different mechanics all at once to help you build for your victory points at the end game. What is end game? Well, that's when you finally get down to the very end, when you've excavated almost all your ruins, you'll finally end up drawing your end of days card. Now that comes out and goes on the board and then you keep playing. That doesn't mean that everything ends right there. You keep playing until all of the locations have been claimed, including the end of day's card, which is bonus points. And then each player then afterwards goes through and adds up their points from the tableaus they've built, from the unique uh, wonders they've collected, and from the sets they've built from ruins that have been excavated and claimed by them. Okay, now we've looked at the game contents and a little bit about gameplay. Let's bring in a special guest for the review. Okay, so let's get a little bit of a review with Callie about Unearthed. So it's a tableau builder, but it's a set builder at the same time. Honestly, I kind of tried to diversify when I was playing and with mixed results. It did okay, but I probably should have focused on either one or the other. <laughs> yeah, I went for uh, a lot of the same cards and got that five-piece set. It was a good game <laughs> that we yeah, I only got four. played. <laughs> Mike and I were kind of trying to block each other, and you just yeah, kind of slipped yeah. by unnoticed. <laughs> yeah, under the radar kind of helped. Uh, overall, I, I do really like the game. Obviously, I have the game itself and the expansion, so I can't say I don't like it. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Mm -hmm. But still, there's, I have you know. There's still a lot of different strategies to the game. Um, 
you know, getting, going for the sets, going for the, um, how you build your tableau of the gems and getting lots of bonus points that way. And with the different cards. Oh, yeah, so there's lots there's, of replay yeah. value. Like the, mm -hmm. the quality of the, you know, the material is really good. The cards are, you know, solid, they're laminated, they're long lasting. Each of the, you know, the die are, you know, like actually full die. It's not like, you know, a little sticker on there. It's you know, like a nice production value. And yeah. honestly, I like the color of it. The pieces were really fun. I just like putting the pieces together, building the little tableau of the different gems and all those different colors and, and kind of, you're building wonders, right? The mm -hmm. lesser wonders and greater wonders. And, and that's a lot of replay value because depending yes. on how you build your tableau or what sets you go for or don't, and that changes your entire strategy and how you interact with the players. There's, there's yeah, a lot of different wonders value. you can put out for each different game. And the card, the Delver cards as well, uh, you're likely not to get through all of them each game. So they add a lot of uh, mitigation to your rolls because there is some luck with the bit. rolling yeah but the delver card you can use to mitigate those rolls and kind of combo and it gives you a reason as well to play on the ruins that other people are playing on yeah. i think that actually uh hurt me a little bit was i thought at least was not going after some of the ones that you guys were going you after to try to get first, get a few cards in there yeah, that changed. <laughs> oh, no, I, I like the versatility too because yeah you can change your strategy mm -hmm. um, i wouldn't necessarily recommend it in game because once you're already halfway through if you're trying to switch from gathering different sets and then more about the tableau odds are some of the unique wonders might have already been taken so you, you might have a little trouble there what did you think of the expansion content uh, honestly i really like the you know not only adding a fifth player because mm -hmm. plenty of times yeah. you get a group where yeah there are four of you around but you know there's no, sorry there's five of you around but there's only you know four player game you can't play then mm -hmm. now you have a fire player game so that's really cool i like that um, I also like the new you know, stones that are out of new pieces because not only can you then just you know build just the raw colors yeah now you've got random wilds mm -hmm. that possibly add a you know minus at the end so there's a little bit of drawback to using them or you've got a teleporter storm which you know depending on your tableau can reorganize the whole thing and get you yeah. all kinds of options in. I felt like I actually built more in this game using the expansion than in previous games yeah. where where I just I just sometimes couldn't get it going where I could get some more than one thing well, actually yeah, it's, built. it's only the stones and once you do, once you send them they're like stuck where they were now you've yeah, got options yeah, yeah now there's more more flexibility there mm -hmm. and there's a lot more unique wonders so that only like that only adds like yeah. replay value for you know what you're actually trying to build towards mm -hmm. but also just you know what you're gonna do with the stones in general there's new combos new all kinds of stuff i really liked it and the uh new delver cards add the element of being able to play them on someone else's turn so it adds reactions. more inter yeah the reactions they add more interactivity to the game where you can actually play something not on your turn so you're not just waiting for everyone else though the turns are pretty short which i think is good mm. in this game you can if it you know what you're playing. going after yeah it's really fast to play and if, uh, like if you guys are all experienced players too the game can go really quickly yeah you're not bored just sitting there wasting time like okay it's my turn uh yeah. heck is it yet is it yet i want to play yeah uh -huh. another thing i really like is that when you're getting to the end of the game and that and card comes out and you're like wait we're at the end of the game i want to keep playing and you've that, got sets you're still trying to build you've yes. got something you're trying to still yes. construct on your tableau and yeah. that's i think that's a, a mark of a really good game is when you want to keep playing again right afterwards mm -hmm. or you want to keep going you don't want it to end mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. As much as the production value is really clean in this game, the expansion, minor criticism, there is a difference in color for the backs of the cards. So as you're drawing the different cards throughout the game, whether it be the Delver cards or even the end game cards, the honestly, the ruins. yeah, the, ru or the ruins or the end game cards, both. The, really all the cards, you notice a difference in color from the expansion to the base game. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference because honestly you're still gonna be drawing the card blind you don't know what it does but you know it's going to be an expansion card or you know it's not going to be it's gonna be base game the biggest impact is definitely on the delver cards because they are um reactions. they have the reactions and so you'll know when someone kind of has a a card that they could use to potentially stop your action okay overall there's a lot of fun playing this i would give this four out of five stones definitely <laughs> so yeah, keep collecting keep doing your tableau and thank you, Callie, for helping me out with this video. Yeah, of course. And as always, we look forward to building tableaus with you next time. Next time.